Kobe Bryant wanted to become the greatest NBA player of all time. And in order to do that, he needed to prove everybody wrong. Despite five championship rings and seven trips to the finals, Kobe spent his career letting his performances speak for themselves. And no performance quite compares to his 2005-2006 season. In this video, I'm gonna explain why one of the Lakers' worst seasons was actually one of Kobe's best. To understand the context of that 2005-2006 season, let's start with the splitting up of the Shaq and Kobe Laker dynasty. You know, I just try to use everything I can for motivation, and that's a tool, you know, for, for me to be able to elevate my team to play the best basketball, so. Historically, the Lakers had a series of legendary stars. You know, Wilt Chamberlain, Magic Johnson, and the good old King of the Sky hook, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. And Kobe wanted to add his name to that list. But he was worried his legacy would be undermined by sharing the court with another great player who, let's be honest, he didn't always get along with, Shaq. When was the last time you talked to Kobe? I don't know. I don't care. Were you guys friends? No. I'm a horse. Kobe ratted me out. That's why I'm getting divorced. The duo streak finally ended with their NBA Finals loss to the Detroit Pistons in 2004. Kobe opted out of the final year of his contract, but instead of Kobe going somewhere else, the Lakers parted ways with Shaq and their head coach, Phil Jackson. Fast forward to the 2005-2006 season and the Lakers rehire Phil Jackson, and Kobe is maniacal to prove that he's much more than Shaq's former counterpart. And this relentless attitude is what leads to the most iconic performance of Kobe's career. Kobe Bryant's 81 point outburst. 81 points. 81 point game. January 22nd, 2006, and Kobe did something that only one other NBA player had ever accomplished, scoring more than 80 points in a single game. Despite the Raptors leading 63 to 49 at the half, Kobe refused to lose and ignited the Lakers rally. Kobe, just Kobe, outscored the Raptors 27 to 22 in the third quarter. No matter what they tried, Kobe was just a step ahead. Even more, despite playing with a below average supporting cast, which included people like Lamar Odom, Kwame Brown, Brian Cook, and others, Kobe lifted the entire team to a 45 and 37 record that season, which put them in the playoffs as a seventh seed in the daunting and difficult Western Conference. That year, the Lakers would be pushed to the limit in seven games against the Phoenix Suns and were eliminated after the first round of the playoffs. And that season, he had six 50-point games. He also had 27 40-point games. And to put that into context, it was the highest single season total since Michael Jordan's 86-87 season. And don't forget, Kobe had already been in the league for 10 years. He was now nearly 28 years old, and since the 1996 draft, he had suffered a broken wrist, numerous ankle sprains, a surgically repaired shoulder, and two knee surgeries. And despite all that, he still won three championships. He was seasoned, accomplished, respected, and yet he was still playing like his legacy depended on it. At practice or when I'm training or during games, I switch my mind to something else. I switch my mode into something else. Right? For me, it's the equivalent of Maximus, Desmus, Meridius, and Gladiator picking up the dirt. It's go time. Right? So that was my mental switch. It was like an actor getting ready for a film. You got to put yourself in that cage. When you're in that cage, you are that character. And then when you leave there, it's something completely different. But when I'm in that cage, bro, don't touch me. Don't talk to me. Just <laughs> leave me alone. I first learned this in an interview that Kobe did with GQ magazine, where Kobe was about as honest about his obsession with basketball as I'd ever seen him. He said that he was part of a group of select people who quote, feel like God put them on earth to do whatever it is that they do. He says, now do we have time to build great relationships? Do we have time to build great friendships? No, we want to work. And it's no surprise that later in that same interview, Kobe reveals that he loves the movie Whiplash which is a movie all about a success-obsessed drummer who breaks up with a girlfriend that he loves and even betrays people in life just so he can be excellent at what he does. Kobe didn't live his life for the normal things that people really value, happiness, fulfillment, relationships. These things couldn't compare to Kobe's love for basketball, his determination, and his obsession with being the greatest player of all time. 
And so, Kobe made sacrifices. He spent all his time creating a system that would scale his competencies over time to create massive advantages over his opponents. Doesn't matter what kind of work they do in the summer, they're never gonna catch up. One of the most notorious examples of Kobe's work ethic, and this is my favorite Kobe story, is when he dove into the NBA referee handbook. Yeah, this thing. He studied it to memorize the exact flow of referee movement and placement. Why? In his words, it creates dead zones, areas on the floor where they can't see certain things. I learned where those zones were and I took advantage of them. I'd get away with holds, travels, and all sorts of minor violations simply because I took the time to understand the official's limitations. In the end, it was Kobe's passion for the game that created his insane work ethic. That work ethic would largely determine his consistency and allow him to maximize his potential. <sighs> this is the ball when it bounces, the sound that it makes, the smell of a basketball. The nets, when you, when you shoot the ball and it goes right through the net. The sneakers as they squeak on the wood. The strategies, uh, the competition, the camaraderie, the fans. Uh, you just go on and on and on. And all of the early mornings in the gym and late nights in the film room turned into unyielding confidence, no matter if the best defender was guarding him or if the game was on the line. You know, those famous Kobe buzzer beaters. Bryant for the win! Bang! As Kobe would later say in his career, it wasn't like I was making that shot one time. It was for the thousandth time. Former number two overall pick Jay Williams, who played in the NBA with the Chicago Bulls, told an iconic Kobe outwork in the world story shortly after he retired. The Bulls were out in LA one night, and Williams thinking, oh, I'm gonna get to the court early, he gets to Staples Center at three o'clock. And his goal was to make 400 shots before he went to the locker room, and then, you know, got ready for the game. As he gets to the court, who does he see? Kobe Bryant, already working out, even earlier than what he thought was gonna be the earliest anybody got there. So he was working out, like, it looks like he was in a dead sweat when I got here, and he's still going. And it's not like his moves are nonchalant or <laughs> lazy. He's doing, like, game moves, you know? Um, I sit there and I unlace my shoes, and I'm like, I wanna see how long this goes. So I sit out there and watch, another 25 minutes. And he got done, that game, he drops 40 on us, okay? And after the game is over, I'm like, I, I have to ask this guy. Like, I, I have to understand, like, why, why he, he works like that. Right. So after the game is over, I'm like, Hey, Cove, like, why, why were you in the gym for so long? He's like, Because I saw you come in, <laughs> and, I, and I wanted you to know that it doesn't matter how hard you work, that I'm willing to work harder than you. Wow. After Kobe's fifth NBA title, he was asked by a local reporter what it meant to him and why this one, this fifth one, was so special for him on a personal level. And with two of his daughters on his lap and a trophy to his left, Kobe gets the last laugh. He's got one more to check. <laughs> and if you want to learn more about another determined competitor, check out my video on Bryson DeChambeau.